Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I hope all of you have not forgotten me yet. So I am resuming the session. That's the good news for all of you. But one bad news I have as well. And that news is that I'm not uh, able to uh, conduct the daily live sessions because my throat as of now needs rest. So what I have thought of I will begin with the weekly current affairs session. So on every Monday, you are going to get the current affairs update of the previous week. So in this manner, your current affairs would not be sacrificed. Your study would not be sacrificed. And I will also try to recover fast. Okay, so that was the just the announcement. So let's begin the current affairs now. I hope all of you are enthusiastic to learn and study with me. Uh, I hope you are aware of this live class schedule and about our application. So I'm moving ahead with the first question itself. Okay, so the first question is which of the following is a state bird of Rajasthan? So here guys option A, great Indian bustard is the right answer. So why was this great Indian bustard in the news? Because the Supreme Court of India had floated this idea that there can be a project GIB the project great indian bustard i hope you have heard about it it is now a very old news so like we have a project tiger we have a project elephant similarly the supreme court said that the project gib can also be introduced by the government so that the population of these extinct uh, birds can be saved because these birds are now on the verge of extinction and they need to be saved and the major threat to their lives is the electrical power lines the power lines which are there uh, they get trapped into those lines and then because of the electrical shock they die uh, within those power lines itself so that's the major threat and because of this threat 18 uh, GIBs die every year in the state of Rajasthan so this is a very uh, I would say crucial situation critical situation and a crucial step is needed now discussing about this bird so this bird is mainly found in Rajasthan and Gujarat okay so that is the you I would say homeland for this and IUCN has categorized this as a critically endangered bird now guys here is the time for the knowledge nuggets I hope all of you have noticed this new thing which I have introduced in your daily current and spotlight magazine so nuggets are usually tasty to taste so i hope these nuggets are also liked by all of you these nuggets are the knowledge nuggets which will help you to expand your horizons as far as far as the general awareness is concerned so here what we have we have certain symbols and static facts related to the state of rajasthan so first of all the state bird is great indian buster 33 districts are there in rajasthan basketball is a state game Camel and Chinkara are the state animals. Desert teak flower is the state flower. And uh, uh, Jhand is the state tree. And Ghumar is the state dance. Many of these symbols must be known by you previously also. That Ghumar is the state dance. And the great Indian bustard remains in the news. And whenever it comes across, always Rajasthan state is in the news. Okay. So these were the informations related to Rajasthan. Now let's move on to the question number two. Which institute is collaborating with Daikand University in Australia to launch the Australia India Center of Energy? So here IIT Madras is the right answer. Now guys, IIT Madras and this university from Australia are collaborating for this Australia India Center for Energy. Now obviously we are talking about a specified center for energy. So it will definitely work for the clean energy, renewable energy. And what kind of work can the universities do? Obviously, the research and development work. So that would be the focus of this center. Now, guys, there is a specific sustainable development goal which talks about the clean and affordable energy. And this is, my friends, is your question. Do tell me which SDG talks about the affordable and clean energy. Now coming back to this center, so it will promote the collaboration among universities, research institutes and industry from India and Australia so that they can work in the field of clean energy. At this center, 
or you can say this announcement was made during the energy summit which the iit madras hosted in december 2022 okay so that is also an important fact now guys that was the news now let's discuss certain additional facts related to this uh, country australia so guys the capital of australia is canberra and australian dollar is the currency this is the very basic information english is the official language anthony albanese is the current prime minister of australia so these are some of the facts you must have come across previously as well now i am going to discuss with you certain extra additional and in, uh, informative facts related to australia so do listen to me very carefully so guys this is you can clearly see this is australia and this is a very uh, large land mass okay and on this huge land mass do you know how many people live only 2.6 crore which is i mean i don't have words here itne bade island pe only 2.6 crore people reside but yes less population leads to more development that is the motto of this country uh, but that is the situation now australia is officially known as the commonwealth of australia it is a sovereign country comprising the mainland of australian continent and some small islands okay the island of tasmania is also there and there are numerous small islands which constitute the country of australia now where is this tasmania island located so it is in the map itself you can clearly see the small dot uh, below the large landmass this small dot is your tasmania island and what is this guys this is the claim of australia on antarctica okay this green portion however after the antarctica treaty of 1961 no country can claim the landmass of antarctica for mineral exploration or for any kind of economic benefit only the scientific or re scientific research work can be done on the antarctica uh, continent okay so this claim does not hold any kind of significance but still this was the claim by australia so i tried to show it here now guys as i told you that antarctica treaty of 1961 allows the scientific expeditions on the island of sorry continent of antarctica so india also has its research stations on this continent your task is to find out the name of those research stations which india has on this continent okay let's discuss more about australia uh, that it is the largest country by area in the oceania uh, continent okay so guys let me just discuss a little bit about it because that is also important i hope you are aware of this fact that there are seven continents on the world and the seventh continent which is often called as australia is actually not a continent oceania is the continent okay australia in itself is just the name of a country and not a continent this entire portion constitute of oceania continent okay so here give me a second so from here this is your oceania so new zealand is also there australia is also there and there are many many island nations which constitute the oceania con continent however geologists have also believed that there is an eighth continent as well which is the zealandia continent 99% of which is submerged now and this new zealand was a part of the zealandia only now only 1% of the zealandia land mass is on the surface everything else is submerged that is the belief now coming back to australia it is the largest country by area in the oceania and world's sixth largest country canada australia new zealand and there are main uh, various countries which constitute the commonwealth group of countries now guys this is an important fact you must have come across the commonwealth of nations you must have come across the news stating that the british crown was applauded or recognized by australia as well okay so what is this let's discuss that commonwealth of nation is a separate group is a separate phenomenon according to this group there are 56 members of which india is also a member so guys what is the basic idea of this commonwealth of nations commonwealth of nations is basically a grouping of countries which were once a colony of the britishers okay 
but this commonwealth group of countries is a different phenomenon because here the countries accept the british crown as the supreme head of their country so the british crown the king charles iii at present is also the head of the state of australia canada new zealand and all these countries majority of which are located in the caribbean as well as in oceania okay so here we have 14 countries in the commonwealth group of countries which accept the british crown as the supreme crown and canada australia new zealand are the three most important countries out of these 14 countries baki sari choti choti countries hai which do not matter okay so i hope this distinction is now clear and you liked this fact now coming to australia one last fact that i wanted to tell is that majority of its population 26 crore ki to population hai total but still almost all of its population reside on the outskirts of the country basically on the coastline okay clearly you can see the major cities are located on the coastal areas only because inland there is forest okay now this is the perth city and this is the sydney city and from this place to this place there is the trans australian railway line and this is one of the largest railway lines across the world the largest one is in trans uh, is in siberia is in russia which is the trans siberian railway and this is the trans australian railway which comes in the list of the largest railway lines and it connects the perth and sydney cities of australia okay mujhe pata hai information bahut zyada ho rahi hai yahan pe but still guys we need to cover it because aapka gap bhi bahut zyada hua hai 20 din ka gap hai आज के वीडियो में कवर करना है तो इन्फॉर्मेशन ज्यादा होगी बट यू नीड टू एब्जॉर्ब इट एंड हाउ कैन यू एब्जॉर्ब इट बेटर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लिसन टू मी एंड देन यू कैन क्रिएट नोट्स आउट ऑफ द एक्स्ट्रा इन्फॉर्मेशन विच आई एम गिविंग यू एज फार एज द इन्फॉर्मेशन रिलेटेड टू द करंट अफेयर आर कंसर्न सो दैट इज प्रोवाइडेड इन द पीपीटी इट सेल्फ ओके एंड दिस पीपीटी आई होप यू हैव गॉट इट फ्रॉम द टेलीग्राम ग्रुप देयर आई हैव ऑलरेडी प्रोवाइडेड दिस पी डी एफ so you can download it from there and you can access the entire current affairs from the ppt itself okay now let's discuss question number 3 <coughs> okay recently Niti Aayog's Atal Innovation Mission has launched a community innovator fellowship program to help the aspiring community innovators establish the knowledge and infrastructure needed for their entrepreneurial journey. What is the tenure of this fellowship program? So guys the tenure of this fellowship program is 1 year. Okay. Now what is this fellowship program? First of all the Atal Innovation Mission has launched this community innovation fellowship program and it is a fellowship program so obviously fellowship includes the uh, monetary sustenance as well as the mentorship so that will be provided to the innovators now what kind of innovators the innovators which will innovate technologies or solutions to cater to certain social problem okay so that is the basic idea read the name community innovator fellowship program so the innovators who will create programs for uh, programs or solutions for tackling the problem of the community they will be given guidance under this program okay it will be a one year community fellowship program eligibility criteria for this program is important because uh, in my opinion this is the area from where the question can be framed otherwise everything is very easy to understand as well as to remember so this is the area where the examiner can trick you so the eligibility criteria for the candidates as far as the age is concerned 18 to 35 bachelor's degree diploma or degree in any field from an accredited institution applicants must have intermediate english skills and the residence address must be 30 kilometers or less from the acic now what is this acic i'm going to discuss that as well but you need to first uh, look at the next point the atal community community innovation center which is the acic is uh, incubating 22 community innovator fellows okay so that is another fact so there is one center the one center will cater to 22 innovators
now guys let's discuss about the atal innovation mission and under this atal innovation mission only acic centers were established okay so i'm going to di discuss them here firstly atal innovation mission of niti aayog is the flagship initiative to promote a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship in the country and it was set up in 2016 and under this initiative the school level innovation is also boosted through the tinkering labs okay so the very first sub program under the atal innovation mission is the tinkering lab itself okay aapke ghar mein koi chhota bachcha hoga ya स्कूल गोइंग कोई चिल्ड्रन आपके नेबरहुड में होगा सो यू मस्ट हैव कम अक्रॉस दिस फिनोमिन ऑफ अटल टिंकरिंग लैब इन द स्कूल्स ओके हाई एवर इट इज नॉट प्रोमलगेटेड टू ईच एंड एवरी स्कूल इट इज रेस्ट्रिक्टेड टू सर्टन स्कूल्स बट येस द फंक्शनिंग ऑफ इट इज इफेक्टिव एंड लेट्स प्रे दैट दिस फिनोमिन स्प्रेड्स टू एवरी स्कूल इन डेली वी हैव अ वेरी गुड कंडीशन ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट एज वेल एज द प्राइवेट स्कूल्स बट इन द अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ द नेशन इट इज really a needed phenomenon that the learning should move from the rote learning to the practical learning and this tinkering lab gives an opportunity to students to learn in a practical manner now the next thing is the atal incubation centers so incubation is given to the startups only so these centers aim to provide the support to the startups and entrepreneurs then we have atal community innovation centers and these are the centers which serve the underserved and unserved regions of india by providing support to the innovators from those regions itself and these community innovation centers are going to provide the community innovative uh, innovators fellowship program only okay which we have just talked about next is atal new india challenges product and service innovations with the national impact so that is the basic idea of this challenge wherein the startups and other uh, innovators are invited to develop the products and services which can have a national level impact arised anic challenges and it aims to stimulate the startups and msme industry innovation mentor of change mentorship and partnership with public private sector ngos academy academics and institute institutions and the basic idea of this mentor of change in initiative of atal innovation mission is to collaborate with various stakeholders so that they can create new solutions and they can come at a solution through discussions and through collaboration okay so that was the atal innovation mission i hope you have covered it thoroughly here i just tried to give you a glimpse of this mission but i would suggest all of you guys to prepare the atal innovation mission thoroughly because it is one of the flagship missions it is already there uh, under implementation by the government of india and it remains in the news very often so atal innovation mission ko padhiye isse related news acche se cover kijiye okay because it can be asked Okay, question number four. Which institute has developed and deployed Sindhuja first ocean wave energy converter? So, what is the right answer here? Again, IIT Madras is the right answer. So, guys, this is the Sindhuja first ocean wave energy converter. From the name itself, you can decipher the basic idea of this machine. It tries to convert the ocean waves into energy, electrical energy. Okay. so that is the basic idea and apart from this uh, there is one more fact that it is at present established or you can say located 6 uh, kilometers away from the coast of tutikorin in tamil nadu okay uh, it can currently produce 100 watts of energy and it can be scaled up to produce 1 megawatt of energy in the uh, next 3 years so that's the basic idea next question is recently central government has approved the print and digital media association which is known as padma in its short form so short form is important because padma's uh, complete full form can be asked so padma is going to be a self regulatory body for the publishers of news and current affairs across the country let's see whether they are going to regulate me or not so who heads this organization so what is the right answer the right answer is mool chand uh, mool chand garg and he is a judge okay 
Central government has approved this print and digital media association which will be called as Padma and it will be a self-regulatory body. As far as the self-regulatory bodies are concerned, I hope you are aware of this fact that their decisions are of no legal value. Okay, this is just a body that provides guidelines. Okay, guideline kind of a work is there for this uh, these type of organizations. Okay, for example, we have association for mutual fund industry as well, but are these the regulators of mutual funds in India? No, SEBI is the regulator and this organization does not even release the uh, legal guidelines for the mutual funds. This just gives the guidelines and for the management of the mutual funds and uh, these guidelines are just, uh, you can say, uh, they work as the moral guidelines or ethical guidelines for the organization. So similar work will be done by this organization as well. The organization with 47 digital news publishers on board will look at the grievance related to the digital media news content on their platforms. The organization will be headed by the judge Mulchand Garg. So he was a former judge, okay. Judges ke naam ke aage, we uh, put this, uh, put this accolade of justice as well. Next question is which state's police has issued the sole mount tokens non fungible tokens on the blo blockchain platform as rewards to the outsta outstanding team members. So here guys, Tamil Nadu is the right answer. <coughs> so Tamil Nadu State Police has issued this soul bound tokens, which is a non fungible token on the blockchain platform to reward its team members. Now guys, what are the non fungible tokens? First of all, you need to be aware of them. So non fungible tokens are basically the tokens. Okay, so first of all, let me tell you that there is a fun non fungible token and there is a fungible token. What is the basic difference? The basic difference is that fungible tokens are the exchangeable tokens. Okay, for example, the currency that is also a token and it is exchangeable we can exchange the currency but these non fungible tokens are non exchangeable okay now what do i mean by that i'm going to tell you that just wait for a second for example there is a painting okay i have put this painting on a blockchain and now this painting would be my non fungible token because I would get a separate code, a private code for that painting. It can be shown to everyone, whichever I like. I can also sell this painting to other person. Okay, so the owners will be in charge of this painting and that would be the non fungible token because with my permission only this product can be exchanged and I can also uh, gain the economic value out of it. Okay, so that's the basic idea of this non fungible token and the very basic layman idea of this non fungible token is that suppose this painting is, a, is in its physical form is just the asset but when I have converted this asset into the digital form then it becomes the non fungible token. That's the basic idea, okay? Aapke paas physically tangible mode mein hai, to that it is an asset, but if you have converted that asset into an into a digital form, then it would be a non fungible token. Obviously, blockchain pe hona chahi, otherwise it will be hacked or there will be uh, severe consequences, okay? Now, the idol wing of the Tamil Nadu Police Department partnered with the Guardian Link, okay? So, Guardian Link is the organization which created this uh, soul bound NFT for the Tamil Nadu police. So these are the two facts which are important Tamil Nadu police soul bound token and the third fact is the guardian link organization that much is enough. Okay. Now one more thing guys NFT ke baare mein achche se pad lena please jinke interviews a rahe hain aur jo mujhe abhi dekh rahe hain. Okay. All those people who have their interviews scheduled for Nabat and all those uh, who are watching me right now please cover the NFTs. Okay. Next question is what is the corpus of PLI scheme for drones for 2022 to 23 and 24 to 25 okay so for these three years what is the corpus so guys the corpus is 120 crore rupees <clears throat> so recently the minister of civil aviation issued the guidelines for the implementation of this scheme to support the indigenous 
drone industry okay some months back the government of india has banned the import of drones in india except for the purpose of research and development so the commercial drones were not imported in india and as of now also the commercial drones we cannot import in india to sell because the government believes that if we do so then we are able to create our own drone industry and now the guidelines have also been released but here there is a distinction the guidelines is specifically for the production linked incentive scheme for drones so that the companies can set up their own manufacturing units and when they start may uh, production of the drones then they will get incentives from the government the tenure of this uh, scheme is this much and uh, 120 crore would be the budget question number 8 agricultural and processed food products export development authority under the union commerce and civil industry minister piyush goyal will attend the millets smart nutritive food conclave in new delhi at the conclave a knowledge book on millets is launched in collaboration with tash so here the right answer is yes bank i hope you are aware that yes bank is the fourth largest private bank in india so excess hdfc icici are the three largest private banks yes bank is the fourth one and after its downfall also it continues to remain as the fourth largest private bank however it is now improving but that's the situation now coming to the news the news is very simple that there is a conclave which was organized which is the millet smart nutritive conclave uh, in new delhi that's the news now apart from this the first of its this is the first of its kind millets conclave and here an e catalog will be released on the 30 potential importing countries and 21 millet producing states of india again this fact is not very significant from exam perspective so you can clearly skip this fact okay <clears throat> a knowledge book on millets is prepared in collaboration with yes bank and it is very rare to see a bank collaborating with the government to create a book and here the subject matter of the book is completely different from the core functioning of this bank so uh, that's make it important The next point is that the government has created the Nutri Cereals Export Promotion Forum to promote the millet exports and production. And 2023 is the International Year of Millets. Okay, so millets के बारे में इतनी सारी बात हुई है. So let's discuss something about millets as well. What are the millets? How many categories of millets are there? What is the scope of millet export as far as India is concerned? As well as the scope of millet production okay so let's start with the categories of millets in india so here is the map i hope you are able to clearly see it uh, let me zoom it out okay so uh, we have amaranth we have barnyard buckwheat finger millet fox tail millet kodu little millet pearl millet porso millet sorghum these are the millets okay in india which is right now being promoted by the government as well okay first of all let me tell you certain benefits of the millets from the human health perspective and from the customers pockets perspective these millets are very very beneficial because first of all their prices are low the millets are called the mota anaj in hindi okay so this anaj is not very tasty as uh compared to other kind of uh food grains like wheat like uh fine flour it is not that tasty but still prices are lower and as far as the health is concerned so their health benefits are very high okay so healthier bhi banayega aur pocket pe bhi effective hai that's the benefit from the customers point of view now what are the benefits of millets from environment point of view from economy point of view from environment point of view you would be amazed to know that millets fixes the nitrogen for the soil okay that is one thing it absorbs carbon more than other crops so that is also a point and it is very resilient it this crop is very resilient to drought it is resilient to the salinity of the soil that means it is the crop of the future it is the grain of the future so why not invest in this 
and the government has also started to invest or promote millets in India. You must have come across Prime Minister Modi uh, promoting this millets as well. And the union government uh, itself has uh, recommended the states to introduce the millets in the midday meal scheme so that the nutritional, nutritional uh, gap in the children can be improved. Okay, So it is going to help in the nutritional security as well. <coughs> okay. So now let's discuss some facts about millets and the scenario of millets in India. So India is one of the leading producers of millets in the world with an estimated share of around 40% in the global production. Top 5 millet producing states are Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh. As far as the millet market is concerned, so it is expected to grow from 9 billion USD at present to 12 billion USD by 2025. Okay, so that would be the market value of millets in India. And the major categories of millets are these, okay, which we have just discussed. India's major millet exporting countries, basically the countries which ask for millets from India are UAE, um, uh, UAE, Nepal, Saudi Arabia, Libya, Oman, Egypt, Tunisia, Yemen, UK and US. The major millet importing countries in the world, okay, as far as the uh, quantum of millet imports are concerned. So, Indonesia imports the majority of millets, okay, then Belgium, then Japan, Germany, Mexico, Italy, US, UK, Brazil and Netherlands. I hope you are understanding the difference between these two. These countries are the countries which, Im which imports from India and these countries are the largest importers of millets in the world. Question number nine, which has become the first state in India to set up a separate Divyang department for the welfare of differently abled people. So here Maharashtra is the right answer. For this separate department, a separate fund allocation has also been done by the Maharashtra government. Not very important from exam perspective, just uh, the fact that Maharashtra is the first state to set up this, this separate Divyang department. That much is important. Now we have discussed about Maharashtra. So these are some of the facts related to Maharashtra, which in my opinion, you can cover on your own as well. But guys, do pay attention to the knowledge nuggets, which I provide you in the daily current affairs PDF in the videos as well, because these additional informations will help you expand your horizon, expand your knowledge base. And you never know when questions can be framed out of this. Okay. So prepare yourself for such kind of news. Now, next question is which state has recently launched the open loop ticketing system? So here guys, Haryana is the right answer. Now what is this open loop ticketing system? Ticketing say kuch to samaj hoga that it is related to the buying of tickets for, for something. Now here that something is traveling. Okay. Now what kind of traveling? Traveling from the roadway buses. Okay. For the railway traveling, we have the IRCTC website, which works once in a blue moon. Okay, Amavasya ki raat ki tarah, wo bhi ek baar chalti hai. Thik hai, 15 din mein ek baar aati hai Amavasya ki raat, but IRCTC ki website, pata nahi kab chalti hai. Mere hisaab se to kabhi nahi chalti hai. Thik hai, chaliye. Traveling ki baat kare, to roadway buses, tickets are being booked through this open loop ticketing system uh, which has been launched by Haryana. Now the very specific thing here is that President of India Draupadi Murmu has inaugurated the system for the state of Haryana. So that makes it important. Okay. Gita Mahotsav ke Doran, this system was inaugurated. Now Haryana has become the first state to have an open loop ticketing system for the roadway buses. <coughs> and the basic idea is to prevent the turmoil which the customers have to face to uh, buy the physical tickets etc. Now they can buy the tickets through the system itself and AU small finance bank has partnered with the Haryana government for this system. So this is again an important fact the bank's name can directly be asked. Okay. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज विच कंपनी हैज डेवलप्ड दिस सर्वाइकल कैंसर वैक्सीन कॉल्ड सर्वावैक ओके ना व्हाई इज इट इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज़ इट इज इंडियाज फर्स्ट इंडिजिनसली डेवलप्ड सर्वाइकल कैंसर वैक्सीन ओके सो सीरम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंडिया हैज डेवलप्ड दिस वैक्सीन नाउ व्हिच वायरस कॉजेस दिस सर्वाइकल कैंसर सो इट इज ह्यूमन पेपिलोमा वायरस ओके व्हिच इज ट्रांसमिटेड थ्रू दी सेक्सुअली it is one of the sexually transmitted disease okay and one of the ways to prevent this virus from transmitting from one person to another person is the condoms okay however the condoms are not 100% safe but they prevent the risk of uh, encountering this disease the risk of shifting this virus very effectively okay so this is one of the ways now recently the government of india has announced that by next year the vaccine the sarvavax vaccine will be given to girls of 9 to 14 years in schools so from april 2023 onwards this will start in schools because the cases of cervical cancer has re- increased recently and this virus does not only co- causes this cervical cancer it can cause many other types of cancer in bodies of males and females both okay so it is not only restricted to females this virus causes cancers in cancer in males as well coming to next question recently the pension fund regulatory development authority has launched the nps prosperity planner to help individuals calculate their retirement income based on the annuity options and contributions to the nps so nps uh, we in november the chairman of the nps trust was appointed and you need to identify the person okay so the person is suraj bhan okay so what is the news pension fund regulatory and development authority i hope you are aware that it is a statutory body it is uh, backed by a statute okay it has launched this nps prosperity planner and the basic idea of this planner is to Uh, plan or calculate the future income okay the retirement income for the beneficiaries that's the basic idea so that they can choose their options wisely i hope you are aware that nps is a market based investment option because it has two uh, accounts auto account and active account in auto as well in the auto account the retirement pension account the money that you put into that account is also invested in the market so that's the basic idea and because of that the nps planner is there nps prosperity planner has been launched so that the people can now choose their options wisely whoever wants to choose otherwise the nps trust is also provides this option of managing their funds okay now on that note i would like to tell you that you need to cover this nps scheme thoroughly okay this is again a very flagship scheme of the government and now it is in the news so you can expect a deeper question out of it as well now this facility is available for individuals through the central record keeping agencies okay Pro, uh, the protein which is earlier called the nsdl fintech and the cams okay pfrda has appointed suraj bhan as the chairman of the nps trust in november itself next question is who has been appointed as a chairman of nabard so shaji kv has been appointed as a chairman of nabard now guys let me tell you a very interesting thing recently i happened to be a participant in the nabard in- interviews not as a candidate but as a panel panelist so there i asked this question from the candidates that who is the chairperson of nabard many of them knew the answer but when i asked them about the tenure of a chairperson in nabard i was amazed that none of them knew the answer guys please don't do this with yourself you need to know at the basics of the organization for which you are applying okay so you are the aspirants of the regulatory bodies you need to be aware of the tenure of the chairperson at least okay so 5 years in nabard is the chairperson's tenure Next question is which Indian state has recently signed an MOU with the Airbnb to promote the state as 
one of the most high potential tourist destinations around the world. So it is Goa. Very basic news, nothing much is there. <coughs> Which PSU has established its Devi Coat Solar PV projects at Jaisalmer, uh, Rajasthan? So NHPC is the right answer. Oh, sorry, it's NTPC. I also got confused. I am also a human being. So this mistake clearly highlights the level of division that the aspirants need as far as the current affairs are concerned. So please prepare yourself and do the revision again and again because such type of news tend to confuse you. I am confused. I am confused. You are confused. Okay? So you need to revise the current affairs again and again. NTPC. Devi Coat Solar PV Project and Jaisalmer. These are the three keywords, just stick to them. Apart from this, every other word is just a waste of time for you. Don't read the other words, okay? Until or unless you are not able to understand the news. Because these sentence connectors have been given so that you can understand the news. Otherwise, the keywords are important only. Question number 16. Which state has set up a committee under the chairmanship of Mangal Prabhat Lodha to gather information on the on the interfaith and intercaste marriage couples. So here guys, Maharashtra has done this work. It has set up this committee so that they can have uh, an official data of the couples which are marrying uh, intercaste and interfaith and the women who have been left uh, by their husbands or uh, whose husbands have died. Uh, their families can be informed so that the women and their children can be taken care of. So that's the basic idea of this committee. Kerala government has recently passed the Universities Law Amendment Bill 2022 to replace the governor from the post of chancellor in the universities in the state. The government shall appoint an accommodation or a person of eminence from any field uh, as a chancellor of the universities, what shall be the tenure of a chancellor? So usually the tenure of any post is five years. So this is true in this case as well. Now what are the things to remember? Okay, uh, first of all, this university's laws replace the uh, university's laws amendment bill 2022 has been passed by Kerala government. Okay, second thing is it is going to appoint a chairperson for the sorry, chancellor for the universities, which was uh, the governor of the state. Uh, the position was held by the governor of the state as of now. And after this bill, once it get passed by the state assembly, the uh, new chairperson, the new chancellor will be appointed and the tenure of that chancellor would be five years. Okay, so these are some of the facts that you need to remember. Keywords I have just told you. Deliberately, I have skipped the name of the governor of Kerala because that's your duty to find out and tell me in the comment section. Recently, Kerala has applied for the geographical tag for its dash product. So, Bepur Uru is the name of the product. Now, what is that product? It is this boat. Okay, Bepur. Uru is the boat and this boat has a cultural significance in Kerala as well. Okay, so Kozi Kode district in Kerala has applied for the GI tag for this Bepur Uru wooden, wooden ship. <coughs> Question number 9. Which of the following exercises will take place at Umroi Meghalaya from 15 to 28 December? So here Kazand is the right answer. So Kazand is basically the military exercise, the army training exercise between Kazakhstan and India and the sixth edition of it is being organized in Umroi, Meghalaya. Okay. Guys, this Kazand exercise started in 2016 and when it was started, its name was Prabal Dostik. Okay, now it has been changed as Kaz in, and fortunately, it has been changed as this because now it is very easy for you to remember. Question number 20 Recently, MTR Technologies has signed an MOU with InSpace India for design and development of a two stage 
to uh, low earth orbit or liquid small satellite launch vehicle. Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center is a single window independent nodal agency which functions as an autonomous agency in the Department of Space. The organization is headquartered in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Recently, the organization's chairperson was appointed. Identify the name of the person. So, what is the person's name? It is Pavan Goenka. So, Goenka ji is heading this organization in space. Okay, the very basic idea of this news is that this MTA, MTAR Technologies has signed an MOU with InSpace and now they are going to develop this launch vehicle. So, they are going to work on a satellite launch vehicle, the name of which is not revealed as of now. So, don't worry about the name. Now, InSpace is a very important organization. So, let's discuss some facts about it. InSpace is a single window agency that promotes the private organization that provides the services to the private sector so that they can also get a level playing field as far as the space technology is concerned. So in the MTR technologies case, the in space is going to provide the mentorship and every kind of support to this organization to create this launch vehicle, okay, because it's a novel organization, it does not have that much experience, which ISRO would have obviously and this is an arm of ISRO. The chairperson of InSpace is Pavan Goenka and the headquarters is Ahmedabad. We have already said. Next question is which country has offered to set up a permanent secretariat for the no money for terror ministerial conference in the country. So here what is the right answer guys it is India. So India has recently organized the uh, <coughs> third ministerial level conference on counter terrorism financing and uh, now India has offered to set up the permanent secretariat for no money for terror ministerial conference in the country. As of now there is no information whether this proposal has been accepted or not but in case if this proposal is accepted then it would be the third international organization in India. Now we have the International Solar Alliance and Coalition for Disaster Resilience Infrastructure which were pioneered by India only, okay. How much is the amount of the revival package of BSNL? So 1.64 lakh crore rupees are going to be wasted on the revival of this BSNL organization. Yes, I have chosen my word wisely. It is a waste of money on this organization because this is not making profit and it is not going to make profit until or unless certain privileges are curbed on certain special people and the functioning of this is this organization is done as a private organization okay so the management and everything of this organization needs to improve the structure it needs to improve until or un unless that happens this organization is not going to revive so this money is going to be put into this organization so that it can be revived and uh, it is going to implement the indigenously developed 4G and 5G technologies. But let's see how its signals are going to come and who is going to take BSNL. The reason for the losses of BSNL are the high employee cost, cost over the years, debt burden, stiff competition in the market and lack of 4G services, except on a limited basis in certain areas. Question number 23. Recently, India has successfully conducted night trials of the nuclear capable ballistic missile named Agni 5th, which is the max, sorry, what is the maximum range of this missile? So, 5000 kilometer is the right answer. Usually, the ballistic missiles are of this or much higher range because ballistic missiles are used for, first of all, far away targets and for large scale destruction, okay. So that's the basic idea, 5000 kilometer is the range of this missile and apart from this, Agni 5th, this is the name of the missile. Apart from this, nothing much is important. Union Minister of Civil Aviation and Steel, Shri Jyoti Aditya M. Sindhya, recently inaugurated a direct flight between Mumbai and San Francisco 
which airline has been given permission to operate flights on this route as of December 2022. So it is going to be a direct flight from Mumbai to San Francisco. So it will be operated by Air India. Okay. So it will be a non-stop flight from India to from Mumbai to San Francisco. Now, as far as Air India is concerned, so N Chandrasekharan is the CEO of this company, who is also the CEO of Tata Sons. Okay, Tata Sons, Tata Consultancy Services. All of these organizations come under the leadership of N Chandrasekharan, who is known to change the face of Tata's uh, Tata company for a better perspective. Okay, for a betterment for the betterment of the company. Now, let's see under his leadership. Let's hope that Air India also get its glory back. Okay, question number 25. Which state signed an MOU with the Indian Meteorological Department in December 2022 to strengthen and densify the weather forecasting network in the state? So here, Uttarakhand is the right answer. <coughs> so this is just an MOU between IMD and Uttarakhand. And the basic idea is to work on the weather forecasting network. Okay, a committee will be formed to identify the places for the installation of the radars and other weather forecasting equipment. Again, not very significant uh, news. I will news ko hi kahungi ki puri news hi significant nahi hai exam ke liye. If your examination is not in January, if it is in January, then it is a crucial current affairs. But in case if it is not in January, then you can skip this news because such MOUs have been signed, are signed and will be signed. Okay, so they have no validity as such. Which state does the GI tag Gamosa belong to? So it belongs to Assam. Recently, nine products were given the GI tag and after this, there are a total of 432 products which have been given the GI tag. Okay, I hope you are aware that GI tag is uh, basically given to add value to the product. Okay, and after the GI tag, the value of the product actually increases and people, tourists buy that product from the place. Okay, now let's have a look at the products which were given the GI tag. I hope it is visible to all of you. Uh, Okay, in case if you are not able to read any word, don't worry about it. You can download the PDF at this moment as well because I have uploaded the PDF uh, on the Telegram channel. So from there, you can keep it on one side and read the words. Okay, first of all, gamosa. So this is this shawl kind of a thing. Okay, stall ki tarah hai ye gamosa asam mein. Then we have tandoor red gram of Telangana. Then we have rakse. Karpo, which is dried apricot from the dark. Then we have Alibag white onion of Maharashtra. Then we have Attapadi uh, red gram of Kerala. Kanthalur vetavada garlic of Kerala. Kondun galur snap melon of Kerala. And Attapadi, this is a very difficult name. Hai, hai? Atu kombu doli. Dolichas bean of Kerala. Okay, obviously, you don't have to remember the names, these are very difficult names. You won't be able to keep it in your mind, even if you try to remember it. Okay, so ye Kerala wale naam aap chhod sakte ho because Kerala is the state which has uh, the highest number of GI tag product. Okay, one of the highest, not the highest, one of the highest. Okay, so if you try to remember the products from Kerala, you would end up uh, cramming your head. Then we have Onakutra Sisem from Kerala again. Okay. Now, what do you have to remember from these nine products? In my opinion, uh, this gamosa is important because it was very much there in the news. Headlines were there uh, covering this gamosa from Assam. Then Tandoor red bean from Telangana was also there in the headlines and uh, in the news itself. Then dried apricot from Ladakh because Ladakh has its significance as well. Uh, I hope you are aware of it. Ladakh was created out of Jammu Kashmir. That's one significance. Other significance is it is trying to stand up on its feet. So this GI tag, this product is going to help its economy as well in 
however in a little manner but still the impact would be there and third is because recently in arunachal pradesh china tried to invade then again we are uh, reminded of the galwan valley clashes which were there again in ladakh so this can trigger the mind of the examiner and the examiner can frame a question out of this as well okay you may never know so these three products and this maharashtra onion is also important so basically you can skip the kerala products because these are very uh, i would say difficult to remember and not because of its difficulty itself but as i told you that kerala has many many products as the gi tag product so there is a very less probability uh, that such kind of product would be asked in the examination okay now it's time for the knowledge nuggets first of all we come across gi tags very often but have you ever tried to know which organization is responsible for giving the gi tag if you have uh, uh, you have searched for this then i would say that you are on the right path guys because curiosity is something that is going to help you clear your examination okay so if you are that curious then i am really glad but in case if you haven't found it so i am here to help you out in that especially first of all <clears throat> the department for of industry promotion and internal trade is uh, giving the gi tag and it is given under the geographical indication of goods registration and protection act of 1999 these two facts are important top 5 states which have the maximum number of gi tags are karnataka tamil nadu uttar pradesh karnat okay karnataka is again repeated so karnataka tamil nadu uttar pradesh and kerala these are the states which have the highest number of gi tag products with themselves okay <clears throat> next question is what is the venue of the surya kiran 60 so surya kiran if you know then you have already given the answer of this question it is a uh, an army exercise between india and nepal so option b is the right answer sixteen tradition of this was organized at the nepal army battle school at salaj handi okay next question recently a group of nine countries have approved 15.5 billion dollars to vietnam to help the southeast asian nation move faster from coal to renewable energy the group included group of seven countries along with dash and dash so norway and denmark are the two other countries which have collaborated with g7 to provide this much amount to vietnam so that it can transition from coal power to renewable power okay so vietnam aims to become the net zero country by 2050 that is also an important fact and one more important fact is that vietnam is the country which initiated the just energy transition partnership to mobilize this much amount from the public and private finances to support its ambitious target of net zero vietnam by 2050 which organization has released the striving for clean air air pollution and public health in the south asia so world bank is the right answer and the impact of air pollution i think here at this moment nobody can tell this better than me because i have been suffering the uh, i would say the pang of this air pollution for two months now okay so again air pollution hai then covid is also returning guys please wear mask in public and maintain social distancing okay as far as the covid is concerned please covid bahut phail raha hai so mask pehniye and air pollution bhi hai to please apne lungs ka khayal aapko khud hi rakhna padega otherwise the the time is not far away when we all have to put the nebulizer to breathe okay now coming back to this report so the report does not say much okay i i mean to say that nothing is that important that it can be asked in the examination uh, just this fact is of a little importance south asia is home to nine of the world's 10 cities with the worst air pollution which causes an estimated 2 million mature deaths across the region each year and incurs significant economic cost i am a little petrified after reading this statement okay question number 30 is which company has been honored with the fikki csr special commendation award 
for its efforts to counter the COVID-19 pandemic. So do remember guys, you are watching this video, you are listening to this question on the Jindal channel. So remember it's the Jindal Steel and Power. Okay, so this Jindal Steel and Power has been honored with the Fikki CSR Special Commendation Award for its special pro uh, project, which is Mission Zero Hunger. Okay, so it was launched during the COVID pandemic so that the people uh, can get food security, can get food, uh, enough food to quench their uh, hunger. Odisha, Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand are the three states where this Mission Zero Hunger was implemented by the Jindal steel and power okay to provide the <coughs> food to truck drivers stranded migrant laborers and the poor later on the initiative was also expanded to delhi uttar pradesh maharashtra and they delivered more than 2 million meals okay so that's a very good initiative now apart from this jindal steel and power ntpc limited has been conferred with the fikki special jury commendation award in the category of environment sustainability for the project revival and operation of municipal solid waste plant at Kasad Varanasi. Okay, Karsad Varanasi. So basically, this award has been given to NTPC for its project to revive the environment. Okay. Next question is where is the India SATCOM 2020 event held? So it was held in New Delhi. So, at the event, the Telecom Regulator Authority of India's chairperson P.D. Vaghela has announced to convert, conduct the world's first auction of satellite communication spectrum, okay. So, we have heard about the 5G spectrum, we have heard about these broadband spectrums, okay. Uh, broadband spectrums are for the internet distribution. Now, satellite communication spectrum is also going to be auctioned by the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, okay. So that is something uh, which needs technical information and knowledge to discuss and as far as my knowledge is concerned that technicality is not required for your exam, okay. So you can clearly skip this entire thing, okay. Just focus on the facts, the keywords, the event, the place of the event and that India is going to be the first country to hold the auction of the satellite communication spectrum okay and this india satcom is the eighth edition of this international summit of the broadband india forum now let's discuss about this organization so telecom regulatory authority of india is established under the telecom regulatory authority uh, of india act of 1997 so again it is a statutory body which means that if we want to change anything in the organization, we need to make amends in this act itself through the route of parliament. Headquarters is in New Delhi. Next question is recently India and Finland signed a joint declaration of intent on migration and mobility to arrive at a mutually beneficial arrangement on migration and mobility between the two countries which of the following sea surrounds the nordic country in the south okay so clearly the question is asking you something else after giving you statements about the current affairs okay so this highlights the importance of reading question in depth so please read the question first and then try to give the answer now coming back to this uh, question the answer is baltic sea okay so first let's discuss about the current affairs then we will shift to the static part of the news so a uh, joint declaration of intent has been signed on migration and mobility uh, between the two countries this means that the people uh, basically the students researchers or the people who want to work in finland uh, from india they can now move easily to that country and the people who want to study work or anything in india they can also move india easily okay but remember that it is a declaration of intent okay there is no uh, i would say visa kind of a thing is given to you that you can go to finland and everything will be sorted out for you that is not happening it is just a declaration of intent that now the uh, migration and mobility from this country to the other country will be eased out okay that is just uh, you can say a diplomatic thing that has happened 
so it will facilitate the mobility of students academics researchers business people professionals uh, uh, in each other country and it will also help in my uh, combating the irregular migration okay uh, india has also signed similar agreements with many countries okay now it's time for the knowledge nugget so the capital of uh, finland is helsinki and the currency is euro it's a part of european union it is a nordic country and which countries are called the nordic countries which are located in the northern hemisphere not the northern hemisphere but the north of the uh, world okay it is also known as a scandinavian country because the scandinavian mountains are spread ac across these countries finland sweden norway these are the three countries which are called the scandinavian countries however denmark is also called sometimes as a scandinavian country but essentially it would not be called a scandinavian country because the mountain range does not spread in denmark okay um finland is surrounded by the gulf of bothnia this is the gulf of bothnia in the west this is the gulf of finland in the east and here we have the baltic sea in the south so that's the basic idea of the geography and here you can see this long border with russia so this is russia and after the invasion of ukraine this country and sweden both of them sweden also shares its border with russia so here is the border of sweden and russia so these two countries applied for the membership of nato and majority of the countries almost 90% of the countries agreed and they were about to get the membership of nato but turkey uh, put some restrictions or put some objections because of which now sweden and finland are not a part of nato it is again under process okay so membership has not been granted to these two countries as of now okay diplomatic relations between india and finland were established in 1949 itself okay two years after our independence diplomatic relations can also be, can only be established once we are independent nation okay so next question is ministry of electronics and information technology startup hub and google have announced the training of 100 early to mid stage home grown startups under the app scale academy program of 2023 when was the initiative launched so here guys 2021 is the year in which this app scale academy initiative launched every year this program or you can say google under this program selects 100 startups for training okay so these are early or mid stage startups at present nearly 50% of the startups in india come from the tier 2 and tier 3 cities which is a very i would say good thing to happen because tier 2 are and tier 3 cities are less developed in comparison to the tier 1 cities and metropolitan cities okay and uh, much work needs to be done in the tier 4 5 and 6 cities okay this startup hub of the ministry of electronics and information technology and google will launch a multi city road show to engage over 1000 startups in cities such as surat indore coimbatore gangtok and jaipur okay so that is again uh, not a very significant thing that is going to happen but still you need to be aware of the organizations which are going to conduct this road show now let's discuss about this app scale academy a little bit it was launched in 2021 the basic idea is to help the startups so that they can develop the high quality apps okay so i hope you must have heard about the chingari app was there there are many other applications which are developed by the indian innovators but because their quality is not that high we are not able to use such applications okay we are dependent on foreigners for the applications like we cam scanner is also there but cam scanner is a chinese application we have to use it because we do not have any other alternative for that and indian alternatives are not of that high quality therefore now you won't use chingari application for uh, instead of whatsapp okay so that is the thing and in order to tackle this situation so that we use our own home grown applications this app scale academy initiative was launched by google now this reminds me that google has also launched google for india initiative 
because we have completed 75 years of our independence okay so this is also important uh, i guess two two three days back i was watching an event of the google for india so now i remember it please remember this fact as well google for india has also been launched in order to commemorate the 75 years of indian independence now coming back to the news google has partnered with the ministry of electronics uh, and IT's startup hub for the App Scale Academy. And every year they select 100 startups for the program. Okay. And they uh, train the startups in gaming, healthcare, financial, technology, education, social impact domain. And the startups are selected from tier 2 and tier 3 cities. The main focus are on these cities. Question number 34 is <coughs> <coughs> Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency has signed a loan agreement with SJVN Green Energy for financing over 4,000 crores for the 1,000 megawatt of solar power project at Bikaner, Rajasthan. Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency Limited uh, is a mini Ratna company under the control of Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. It was established as an NBFC which extends finances for the new and renewable energy projects through the current chairperson of this organization. So it is Pradeep Kumar Das. The basic news is this much only that the, the IREDA and the SJVN, these two organizations have signed an MOU and under this loan agreement, sorry not MOU, loan agreement this am much amount will be given by this IREDA to the SJVN, okay, for setting up a power plant in Rajasthan. Now, this organization in itself is very important. That's why we are going to discuss a bit about it, okay. So, it is a Mini Ratna company, Mini Ratna category first company. So, there are two categories within Mini Ratna. However, there is no such category in, uh, in the other two uh, categories like the Maharatna companies and the Navratna companies, okay. This IVDA was established as an NBFC in 1987 under the Companies Act of 1956, okay. So, it is an NBFC under the Companies Act, okay. But RBI is going to regulate the NBFC because RBI regulates the financial institutions including the NBFC. So it extends the finances for the new and renewable energy project. And the motto of this organization is energy forever. And the chairperson is Pradeep Kumar Das. Okay. So I hope these facts were important and you like these facts about the IREDA. Do tell me in the comment section below that whether you knew that this IREDA was an NBFC, uh, is an M NBFC. Did you know this fact? And do tell me in the comment section below. And one more thing. Uh, the motto on and the chairperson. These two facts are very important. So please remember these facts. Next question is the fifth edition of the Youth Collab Asia Pacific's largest youth innovation movement was jointly launched by the Atal Innovation Mission, Niti Aayog and UNDP. This initiative was launched in 2019 in India. When was this initiative curated? So guys, this initiative was curated in 2017. Okay. Now, what is this youth collab? Guys, first of all, it is Asia Pacific's largest youth innovation movement. Okay. It was launched by Atal Innovation Mission and UNDP India. Now, this is basically an initiative under which the youth are encouraged to take up the, uh, basically, to participate in the discussions and in the effort so that they can become the change makers itself. 2019, when this initiative was launched in India, however, the conceptualization of this initiative was done in 2017 itself and it was implemented by UN in 2017 itself, okay. <coughs> now the basic idea of the youth collab is to establish a common agenda for the Asia Pacific countries to in invest in and empower youth to accelerate the implementation of the sustainable development goals through leadership, social innovation and entrepreneurship. This initiative has been launched in 28 countries till now. Okay, 28 countries ki baat kar rahe, not states of India. 28 countries mein launch kiya ja chuka hai. Okay, 
now youth collab was launched in 2017 with in collaboration with city foundation and it is basically a forum which helps the youth to engage in uh, and provide solutions for better implementation of the sdgs next question is <clears throat> which state has launched the friends of library scheme to promote reading by delivering books to people who are unable to visit state run libraries so here tamil nadu is the right answer okay so friends for library scheme as we have read in the question itself it is going to increase the having uh, habit of reading uh, in people and how are they going to do that they are going to deliver the books to the people who are not able to visit the libraries okay now that is one scheme there is one more scheme that tamil nadu government has launched and that is this sanitary workers development scheme okay this is the second scheme now remember this thing that tamil nadu is the second state to launch such kind of a scheme for the sanitary uh, workers okay so it helps to uh, de develop the sanitation workers and their family members uh, with the help of the urban local body so basically safety kits are going to be provided to the sanitary workers so that they can be uh, helped because it is a very serious health hazard for the sanitary workers who go inside the pit holes and clean the pit holes and all of these things okay so that is the thing now the tamil nadu state government has also launched a mobile application named swash uh, swas sanitation workers health welfare and safety swas means breath and here the full form of swas is sanitation workers health welfare and safety Tamil Nadu is the second state after Odisha to launch this application and the scheme. Which institute of ICAR has developed a drought tolerant variety of chickpea named Pusa JG sixteen? So here, guys, option B, Indian Agricultural Research Institute, which is a very prominent institution and it is located at Pusa Road in New Delhi. So this has developed this. chickpea tech uh, chickpea seed okay variety of chickpea okay so this new variety is drought resilient variety of chickpea uh, named as pusa jg16 and all these organizations <laughs> jawaharlal nehru krishi vishwa vidyalay in jabalpur rajmata uh, vijay rajay sindhya krishi Vish, uh, Vishwa Vidyalaya Gwalior and Ikri Sat in Hyderabad these three organizations collaborated with this Indian Agricultural Research Institute to develop, develop this chickpea technology chickpea variety okay not technology it's the variety of seed now this variety will enhance the uh, productivity the yield of chickpea in the drought areas okay for example Uh, the Madhya Pradesh, Bundelkhand area of Uttar Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Southern Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Gujarat. There are certain regions in these states where the drought is a very major problem. Okay, so in those areas, this chickpea uh, seed can be uh, sown, and this chickpea will uh, increase the productivity. Okay, now since it is also a lab-made seed, and here certain changes are done in this chickpea. i reminded of i get reminded of the gm mustard which was also given the approval recently okay by the agency the health agency in india however the commercial uh, production of this gm mustard is not allowed as of now because it is in trial okay so gm mustard is allowed bt cotton is allowed and it is a commercial crop it is a cash crop whereas mustard is a food crop okay so that's the distinction however there is one more crop that is bt brinjal which is not allowed because its health benefit sorry the impact of this bt brinjal on the human health was very severe that's why it's commercial and every kind of production of this bt brinjal was banned in india okay however the production is still done because we know the laws are made and they are flouted that's the seen everywhere in the world not in india only everywhere where, wherever the rules exist the flouting of the rules also exist so bt brinjal banta to hai hi aur production mein bhi hai aur consumption mein bhi hai 
but all these things the gm mustard this chickpea variety however it is not genetically modified as such but still there are certain modifications done to the seeds of chickpea so that it can become more drought resilient so this entire thing is surrounded by a debate and as the aspirants you should be aware of that debate as well and i would be really glad to know your opinions on that so what is the debate the debate is whether the genetically modified crops be grown in india especially what kind of crops the food crops because if the genetically modified food crops are there in india it enters the food chain then it can have severe impact on the health of the people that is the one side of the argument the other side of the argument is that the gm crops are already grown in many parts of the world and we are importing those grains and indirectly we are consuming them it is just that we do not have an indian label on those grains it is, these are the imported grains but still that has entered into the food chain and we are consuming it as of now as well then why are not we onboarding on the gm crops in india as well okay because if we produce more and more gm crops then it will help us in food security because they will be more resistant to the climate change so why not ensure that we also grow the gm crops now what is your opinion on that i have given you the arguments of both the sides pros and cons now i would like to know your opinion as well next question is ministry of agriculture and farm and welfare and department of space have signed an mou to develop a krishi decision support system using the satellite data this system is going to use the vsat 1a satellite when was the satellite launched so it was launched in february 2022 okay so this is the vsat satellite 1a satellite and here i have drawn a little heart i have tried to draw a little heart but it's a really bad drawing uh you guys are aware of it now you would be thinking what the teacher is doing right now i am making this heart so that you guys can remember the date on which this reset satellite was launched it was launched on 14th february that's the valentine day on 14th february 2022 okay now why is the date important actually the date is not at all important the month and the year is important okay and because in february we have only one special day and on that special day only this reset one satellite was launched so i hope that with this heart and with this entire thing you will be able to remember the launch of the satellite okay now what is this krishi decision support system so this support system is go basically going to be a portal ठीक है विच विल यूज द सेटेलाइट बेस्ड डेटा सो दैट दे कैन इन्फॉर्म द फार्मर्स अबाउट द वेदर कंडीशन एंड एवरी थिंग दैट द फार्मर नीड्स टू नो फॉर ग्रोइंग बेटर क्रॉप्स ओके फॉर ग्रोइंग क्रॉप्स फॉर अ बेटर हीट सो दिस सपोर्ट सिस्टम विल बी डेवलप्ड ऑन द लाइन्स ऑफ गति शक्ति एंड इट विल इंक्लूड द डेटा फ्रॉम द रीसेट वन ए सेटेलाइट एंड वेदर्स ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ स्पेस ओके सो रीसेट वन data will be extremely useful in developing the decision support system for agriculture bio resources environment and water resources and disaster management so the reset one satellite data will be used for all such purposes okay uh, the system will also integrate the mostack and bhuvan geo portal of isro and the systems of icar so that all these systems when they are integrated they can provide a holistic information to the farmer what kind of environment is going to happen what kind of uh, weather will be there what uh, will would be the rain size and whatever is there every kind of information will be given to the farmer so that the farmer is able to take a better decision and that's the basic idea of this decision support system now let's discuss about the systems which will be integrated with that one website so reset 1a it is india's first radar imaging system uh, satellite which was launched on this valentines day in 2022 so it is an all weather satellite basically in all types of weather it can penetrate the clouds and see on earth and it can penetrate deep into vegetation it can take high resolution geospatial images regardless of the lightning conditions
now the mosdac so mosdac is basically a center not a satellite okay so the meteorological and oceanographic satellite data archival center so it is a archival center uh, of the space application center and it has a facility for satellite data reception processing analysis and dissemination so it basically receives the data it analyzes the data of the satellites and then it provides the data to the necessary stakeholders it is operationally supplying earth observation data from indian meteorology and oceanographic satellites uh, in order to uh, help the researchers okay to research uh, in the national and international interest okay so not only the national agencies but international agencies are also getting data from the mosdac bhuvan is also a type of web portal okay so mosdac is only a center but bhuvan is a portal and uh, reset one is a satellite so three different kind of things are going to be integrated okay so it is a web portal it is used to access the geographical information and associated geographical services are provided through this portal okay information like uh, the space and everything that is the geographical information and the uh, display editing analysis etc services are also provided by this portal only okay so it collects the information and it provides the information next question is who is the current cmd of cotton corporation of india so here guys lalit kumar gupta is the right answer cotton textile export promotion council that is tex prosil and Co cotton corporation of india have signed an mou for branding and traceability of indian origin kasturi cotton during the textile conclave in varanasi up okay guys if you are bored or if you are getting restless because of the long video you need not to worry because uh, we are on question number 39 and there are a total of 50 questions in this video so we are about to end this video okay all and you also need to understand you have spent 20 days without any video right so this long gap has to be filled at least by two hours so that is the time period you need to give me okay so be patient i am quickly trying to finish the current affairs okay and i hope at the same time you are also enjoying it because if you are not enjoying your studies you are not studying you are just uh, burdening yourself okay the textile conclave coincided with the kashi tamil sangam event in varanasi okay that's not very important kashi tamil sangam however is important i hope you are uh, reminded of it i have taught you this kashi tamil sangam event uh, in the initial videos of this month okay it is nothing but the amalgamation of the cultures of kashi varanasi and tamil because these two cities are considered to be the ancient centers of civilization knowledge and literature and everything okay so that is why this event is being held now this union minister of textile which is piyush goyal has entrusted the text prosil uh, for implementing uh, the kasturi cotton brand okay now what is this what is the news basically first of all understand this point that kasturi is the brand name for the indian cotton okay and the news is that the text prosil is the export agency of india cotton export agency of india and now it has been given this responsibility to implement the kasturi brand cotton okay what is the meaning of implementing basically sell our cotton with the name with the brand name of kasturi in the international market and promote the kasturi cotton for its quality okay because when it is promoted only then our cotton can be sold in the international market so that's the basic news okay so i hope you have got an idea of it now it's time for us to know certain extra facts chairman of text process is sunil patwari Corporation, uh, Cotton Corporation of India was established in 1970 under the Ministry of Textile. The current chair, chairperson and MD is Lalit Kumar Gupta and CCI is headquartered in Mumbai. This CCI is not Competition Commission of India, it is Cotton Corporation of India. Next question is, which has become the first small finance bank to be appointed as a Spursh service center? So here, Equitas is the right answer. Okay. 
So, Equitas has uh, signed an MOU with the controller general of defense accounts and the basic idea of this MOU is that now Equitas small finance bank will also provide these services to the defense personnel and their family members under the SPURSH program okay so SPURSH is what SPURSH is the system for pension administration Raksha service center okay so now this bank will also act as a center and uh, the defense personnel the retired defense personnel and their family members can go to the bank and ask for the services from the bank under this initiative okay and Equitas is the first small finance bank which has been integ uh, which has been uh, appointed by the Ministry of Defense for Spursh. Next question is which country has launched a group of friends uh, initiative to promote accountability for crime against the peacemakers. So here guys it is India, the country which has always stood up for peace. So now it has stood up for the peacemakers. So it has launched a group of friends uh, initiative to promote the accountability for the crime against the peacemakers. And these are the countries which are the co-chairs of this group of friends initiative to promote the accountability for crimes against peacemakers. It was launched during the current presidency of India at the UNSC. I hope you are aware that UNSC has the permanent five members and there are 15 non-permanent members. And these 15 members are given the chairmanship of UNSC for one month in an alphabetical order. So in December, India got this chance to be the chairperson, sorry, the president of UNSC for one month. Next question is who has cracked the Panini code in his thesis? So here Rishi Raj, Raj, uh, Raj Popa is the right answer, okay? Now what is this Panini quote? I hope you are aware that Rishi Panini was a very, uh, I would say intellectual person in the ancient India and he was a grammatologist. So he worked in the field of grammar language and there is a very important book of his which is known as Ashtadhyay. Okay, and that book was not code, decoded by many people and now the Rishi Raj Popa, who is an Indian PhD student at the University of Cambridge, claims to have coded the encoded this Panini code. Okay, so that's the basic idea, and his thesis is named as "In Panini, We Trust Discovering the Algorithm for Rule Conflict Resolution in the Ashtadhyay." So, this specific uh, problem was not decoded. The entire Ashtadhyay uh, book was. D was encoded but this particular code was not encoded okay so that's the basic thing and uh, Panini is a famous Sanskrit scholar philologist and grammarian and he lived in the 5th century BCE okay before the common era in India and the first descriptive linguist is Panini the world's first distinct descriptive linguist is Panini and the Western scholar considers him as the father of linguist. The most famous work of Panini is Ashtadhyay, which defines the ancient language of Sanskrit. Okay, so that's the sad part of our own history and the, the curriculum that we did not know about Panini in our schools. That's the sad part. We should have Panini and many other uh, important scholars of ancient India in the history books so that we also get a sense of pride in uh, our civilization, in ourselves as the people of this land which harbored the very first urban civilization, that is the Indus Valley civilization. Let it be. So let's discuss the next question. Recently, the constitution, the scheduled tribe order, third amendment bill 2022 has been passed by the Lok Sabha to include the Hathi community into the scheduled tribe list. Which state does the community belong to? So it belongs to Himachal Pradesh. Now before going into the details, first let me tell you that SC and ST list are made by the center. Okay. That is why you come across these orders which include the certain communities into the ST list and certain communities into the SC list, okay? Because these lists are created by the center, which means that inclusion of certain communities and exclusion of them 
are completely the responsibility of the union however for obcs the matter is different because here the states are also given the power to create their own obc list okay but as far as the central government jobs are concerned so the list of obcs prepared by the center is accepted okay so that's the basic idea now here as far as this community is concerned this community belongs to sir sirmore district in himachal pradesh and now it has been given the scheduled tribe uh, status by the lok sabha recently union health minister dr mansukh mandavia has inaugurated icmr national animal resource facility for biomedical research at genome valley in hyderabad who has been appointed as the director of this institute so ramachandra sg is the director of this institute okay and this institute is expected to uh, create a lot of space for the biomedical research in india okay because every kind of biomedical research is done on animals first and then it is tried on humans so it is going to give an opportunity to test new kind of uh, i would say medicines or whatever is that there biomedical research on animals as well as on humans okay so it is going to study animals in biomedical research for discovering causes diagnosis and treatment of zoonotic agents and disease director general of icmr and secretary of the department of health research is dr rajiv bhel which is important for you to know and the specific organization the national uh, institute for the animal uh, biomedical research is the director of this institute is uh, ramachandra sd question number 45 uh, union minister for science and technology jitendra singh <coughs> launched the one week one lab ca country wide campaign okay uh, from the 6th january 2023 under the campaign each and every lab of csir will display their innovation one by one every week to the common citizens of india how many csir institutions are located in india so 37 institutes are there i hope you have understood the basic objective of one week and one lab uh, campaign so let's discuss only the important facts 37 csir laboratories are there and csir uh, campaign this one week one lab campaign was announced during the 200th governing body meeting of the csir okay which was held at the science center in new delhi and a new tagline of csir was also announced which is csir the innovation engine of india and this is a very important statement okay the paperless e office across all the labs will come into effect from 1st april 2023 and e performance appraisal system will also be there for 2022 to 2023 now csir council for scientific and industrial research was established on 26 september 1942 on this day we celebrate the csir day because uh, this organization was created on this day under the societies registration act 1860 and it is primarily a research and development organization as far as the leadership of this organization is concerned so prime, prime minister is the chair per, sorry is the president of this organization vice president is the minister of science and technology and the director general who is actually responsible for entire uh implementation of the works and everything which goes on in the organization is n kalai selvi who is the first women director general of csir okay which company is the first in the world to introduce gms based cow pee hybrid in the market and has released three hybrids in cow pee bubbly shelly and purvaja so here dharti agro chemicals is the right answer okay so this gms based cow pee hybrids have been released by the dharti agro private limited uh, now it is 
easily affordable and provides rich source of protein and micronutrients for uh, the uh, micronutrients as a crop. Now it is a leguminous crop, it fixes atmospheric nitrogen and it is involved in carbon sequestration as well and soil amelioration thus reducing agriculture's contribution towards the volumes of crop protection products and enhancing the sustainability of the soil health okay so it is again uh, again a new modification or you can say advancement in the crops in india what is the rank of india in the 11th global food security index so it is 68th rank the 11th edition of this was released by the economist okay so this is a british magazine it has released the economy uh, the global food security index the parameters are affordability availability qualities and safety and natural resources and resilience india is ranked at the 68th position along with algeria okay last year in 2021 india's rank was 71st china's position is 25th and uh, a total of 100 13 countries were assessed in this index okay now who are the top rankers so finland is the top ranker ireland is second norway is third how much stake does lic own in ircdc so 7.2 percent stake is held by lic What is the interest rate offered to the general public in the Ind Shakti triple five days FD? So it is seven percent, and it is launched by the Indian Bank. So Ind Shakti triple five days is a FD scheme, and seven percent is the interest rate for the general public. Seven point one five for the seniors, senior citizens. Triple five days is the tenure, and five thousand to two crore is the limit of amount that can be stored as FD under this facility. Okay, so we are at the last question. Who has been elected as the Prime Minister of Ireland for a second term? So Leo Varadkar is the right answer. And why is it important? Because he is of Indian origin. So we can clearly say that the British Isles are now ruled by the people of Indian origin. Wow, that's a very good fact. So Leo Varadkar has been elected as a Prime Minister for Ireland, of Ireland for the second term okay so guys let me show you the british isles first okay they these islands are known as the british isles collectively okay this is the united king uh, this is the great britain england wales scotland comprise of the great britain and when we mix northern ireland into this then we have the united kingdom okay and this is the Republic of Ireland, okay? So this Republic of Ireland is a different country and the Northern Ireland is a part of the UK, okay? So that is the distinction and these are the different, uh, I would say territories on these two British Isles. And now the entire British Isles is ruled by the people of Indian origin. I'm not saying Indians are ruling them, but the people of Indian origin are ruling them. The people who were considered as of inferior race or uh, lacking leadership qualities by these Britishers are now actually ruling these Britishers. Okay, so Ireland capital is Dublin and currency is pound. Official language is Irish and English. Geographically, the country is, on, country is on the British Isles and it is divided into two parts. We have just discussed it. So here guys, it's time to end this long video. I hope you have enjoyed the current affairs. And in case you want to suggest something, you want to give feedback, you can provide it on the WhatsApp group uh, on this number. Okay, so uh, okay, this is our WhatsApp number. So you can provide any kind of feedback, positive, negative, whatever you want to suggest, you can provide it uh, on the channel. And one last thing that I want to tell you guys, again, remind you of the fact that weekly I'm going to provide you the current affairs. So, milte hain ab next week on Monday. Till then, prepare the current affairs from the website. I hope you are going to cover the current affairs on a daily basis because it is a very, I would say, difficult subject 
of your preparation. So prepare it on a daily basis. Goodbye, guys. Stay, stay safe. Stay healthy.